I want to thank uh, the Society of Robotic Surgery and particularly uh, Dr. Bernati and Dr. Poston uh, for the kind invitation uh, today. My uh, presentation will be about uh, totally endoscopic coronary artery bypass grafting advanced version. I'm Gianluca Torregrossa. I work at University of Chicago and my senior partner is Dr. Hussein Balki. I do not have any financial disclosure. I strongly believe that the future, particularly in coronary revascularization, is with a robotic platform. And I believe that there is still a flourish future for minimal invasive cardiac surgery. If you think about the evolution of coronary artery bypass grafting in the last 30 years, you see that uh, there have been two major push, two major direction towards which the entire community of cardiac surgeons have tried to focus. And one is the multi-arterial bypass grafting. And the second one is the minimal invasive bypass grafting. In the multi-arterial bypass grafting, uh, we have had more than six randomized trials that have confirmed the superiority of arterial conduit in bypass grafting respect of vein conduit. The fact is that unfortunately still nowadays, the amount of uh, multi-arterial bypass grafting in the United States account for less than 10% of the total volume of coronary artery bypass grafting performed per year. And the minimal invasive bypass grafting that has been developed in the mid of 90s with the idea through a small thoracotomy to take down an internal thoracic artery and to deploy the internal thoracic artery on the left anterior descending coronary artery has nowadays accounting for less than probably 1%. I wanted to prove to you that there is a huge substantial literature evidence that it's possible to offer to our patients a multi-arterial bypass grafting in a minimal invasive approach, and that the future of what we should offer to patients is a combination of bilateral internal thoracic artery bypass grafting performed with a robotic approach and a stent. And this combination is what we call advanced hybrid revascularization. So the aim of complete the revascularization with a stent and have performed at first a total endoscopic coronary artery bypass grafting with the two best arteries that have been provided by Mother Nature to revascularize our heart, that are the two internal thoracic artery. In this way, we do not split the breastbone. We don't have any type of wound infection. The patient's recovery is extremely fast. And when we can associate a total endoscopic coronary artery bypass grafting technique and beta harvesting with uh, an off-pump strategy, we do not have to go on bypass. We do not have to manipulate the ascending aorta. We don't have to make any type of incision or any type of harvest of veins in the lower leg of the patients. And that account for 0% risk of stroke, zero manipulation of the ascending aorta, zero risk of infection or wound healing problems for the lower leg. And there is a, a huge strong evidence in literature that what we should do as cardiothoracic surgeon is not open a chest of a patient, fillet a long piece of vein and one mammary artery, cross clamp an aorta, putting cannulas inside the body of a patient and perform a full revascularization with one mammary artery and multiple veins. But uh, Dr. Raza and uh, Dr. Sebik uh, uh, at Cleveland Clinic already in 2014, after reviewing uh, more than 11,900 patients uh, who received coronary artery bypass grafting and had diabetes mellitus, showed that actually 
a bilateral internal thoracic artery, even associated with an incomplete revascularization, was offering a better rate of survival in long term rather than a bypass performed with one internal thoracic artery and a complete revascularization achieved by multiple saphenous vein graft deployed in all of the territories of the heart. So the bilateral internal thoracic artery is the best way to perform a coronary artery bypass grafting, even in associated with an incomplete revascularization. And this concept has been recently proved even by the Emory University Hospital, where by a revision of uh, uh, more than 17,000 patients who received coronary artery bypass grafting, they showed that patients with multiple arterial coronary arteries do perform better in long term, even when the multiple arterial CABG is associated with an incomplete revascularization. So having more arteries as conduits is more important than have a complete revascularization achieved with one internal thoracic artery and several veins. And finally, Cleveland Clinic in uh, uh, Journal of American College of Cardiologists showed this extremely important paper where they prove that in 6,127 patients who receive a bilateral internal thoracic artery, there is a very important connection among the amount of myocardium served by this uh, bilateral internal thoracic artery and the uh, long-term survival. So the uh, this importance is extremely valid because showed that the bilateral internal, internal thoracic artery should be deployed to the best target of the left coronary system. So every target that received a, uh, an LAD and a second target for the lateral wall that reach at least 75% of the, myo of the uh, myocardium. And in their results, they showed that the importance of the non-bilateral internal thoracic artery target, whatever bypass with vein, other conduits, or not bypass at all, has no independent effect on patient survival. So what really a patient needs is two internal thoracic artery deployed to the best targets on the left coronary system. And this is something that we all, as a community of cardiothoracic surgeons, can achieve in a minimal invasive approach. We can achieve with a thoracotomy, and this is a good report by um, Dr. Davier Vala and, uh, from the Leipzig group, that perform a mid capture with two internal thoracic arteries deployed on several targets for the left side. And even if they should be congratulated for their efforts, but when you read this paper, you understand the technical challenge of perform such an operation through a thoracotomy with direct vision or with video assisted vision. And the reality is that there is a very tight patient selection in this group of patients who have been candidate for this type of procedure. The robotic approach instead Per allow us to harvest two internal thoracic artery in any type of patients. With Dr. Balti here at University of Chicago, we say that the robotic approach democratizes the use of internal thoracic artery. The superiority of the view of the robot, the potential to be extremely precise in the harvest of the internal thoracic artery, allow us to perform the harvest of one or two internal thoracic artery in any type of patient. Patients that are grand obese with BMI greater than 40, patients with a severe diabetes, patients with a HbA1c greater than 10, greater than 15. So the amount of uh, indication for using bilateral internal thoracic artery with a robotic approach become extremely, extremely generous. 
the internal thoracic artery can be harvested in a very easy and facilitated way with the robot thanks to the high precision of the technique and thanks to the use of the robotic stabilizer that is an essential tool to allow a complete harvest of both internal thoracic artery. And again, this is uh, one of the uh, advanced coronary vascularization that we have performed here at the University of Chicago, a RIMA 2 LED with a great flow. You can see the right thoracic artery and here a left internal mammary artery in a sequential grafting to Ramos and OM1. And then the patient had completed his revascularization with a stent on the right coronary artery. And when you think about the indication for right coronary artery, the right coronary artery has been always a different entity. In fact, the use of an arterial conduit on the right coronary artery has been, even on guidelines, very debatable. And this is because the right coronary artery has a different type of behavior rather than the left coronary artery system. And this is our, our results of our hybrid coronary vascularization with an advanced technique. So with one uh, arterial conduit, a left internal thoracic artery um, that bypass multiple targets in a sequential uh, pattern or two internal thoracic artery deployed to the best targets of the left coronary system. And then the rest of the revascularization achieved by one or multiple stents performed on the right coronary artery or on other targets of the left coronary system. And here are uh, all of our results. The beta use was uh, almost 88%. The sequential anastomosis account for 20%. We had 4% of concomitant procedure. Cardiopulmonary bypass was using only on one patient. So all of the procedure has been performed off pump with no aortic touch technique, making stroke or TIA zero. And making, of course, sternal wound infection zero because we do not perform any type of incision in the sternum, but rather we perform free small keyhole incision on the left side of the chest. So this is the way in which we do believe the future of coronary vascularization should be aimed. What we need is now a, a community of cardiac surgeon that wants to embrace this challenging technique that needs a proper training to be performed. And we need a support from industry that is uh, withdrawal technical uh, uh, elements that are essential for this type of techniques, in most importantly, the coronary stabilizer to perform not only the distal anastomosis, but also to harvest the right internal thoracic artery. And finally, we need the uh, coronary stable, uh, stable that allow us uh, to perform an automatic connector distal, uh, for distal targets to be reintroduced in the market. This is a very important moment for, car for cardiac surgery. In this moment of uh, uh, enthusiasm, for transcatheter option, we should make sure that a part of our community still is capable of performing and keep training a new generation in minimal invasive technique and in robotic platform. Thanks a lot for your attention.